Cousins bought pre-existing brand, Original Source, and historically it hadn't had much advertising at all. In fact, it had grown through primarily word of mouth and a really strong PR strategy. And when the brand uh, took over, it had a really strong core niche loyal audience, but it wasn't a very big one. To keep using the marketing strategy that the brand had used prior to them buying it wasn't going to give them the growth and the return that they needed. It needed to behave like a bigger brand, but the challenge was how to use the media and ultimately the creative to retain this cult status. You've got big brands like Imperial Leather, of course, and uh, Dove, uh, Radox, spending you know millions of pounds year in, year out to kind of support and ensure the brand is heard. So we, we knew we had to think more cleverly, more disruptively about how we planned the communications to, to try and outshout, to some degree, the, the level of spend that we actually had to play with. A spot in the Guardian or Independent might reach 600 odd thousand individuals in the audience, but actually it, one spot on on TV could reach 1.6 million of the audience. And and you know with a, a more limited budget, uh, we felt that you know that TV in that instance would deliver us the the, the breadth of audience that that this strategy required. The proposition came from the fact that it was packed with natural stuff, and I think that was probably even on the original brief. You know the fact that. 10 lemons go to make up one bottle or 7,000 mint leaves in one bottle. So that was kind of already there. And because that is quite a powerful kind of bit of information to get across, we thought as a team, let's not hide that away, let's just tell people. We recognised that Original Source was a fantastically successful brand in its own right. And we didn't want to upset the apple cart and completely change everything that the brand had done. But ultimately, how do you take a small, relatively unknown at the time, cult brand to a mass market? And that was the challenge. We did quite a lot of analysis up front to, to see whether our audience was watching more or less telly than they had done historically. And I think the assumption was that, that oh, this, this audience are out there living life to the full and experiencing everything that the, the world has to offer. And therefore, they're not sat down watching telly. And in fact, in reality, what we found was that they were watching slightly more more uh, television than they had done, you know, 10 years ago. And I think we recognised that from a media point of view, TV would deliver the numbers that we needed, but ultimately the challenge was, creatively, how do we retain the, the, the cult status and the integrity and this kind of underground feel of the brand? Conventionally, TV is a, is a mass market audience for, for mass market brands. And actually, with a little bit of clever thought, a little bit of disruption, you can actually use a, me, a medium like TV in a really powerful, impactful and cultish way to really kind of tap into an audience's aspirations, not just a, a vast size of audience. You know, when you've got a commercial break that's full of sexy car commercials and it's kind of information flying at you all over the place. You need something that's very, very simple uh, and very kind of striking and that's, that was a starting point for the creatives, I think. We didn't go down the, the usual 30 second spot route of sort of the bigger shower brands. We chose to operate a 10 second spot policy and I think that was disruptive and it kind of stuck out in the breaks really because everybody would expect a sort of 20, 30 second ad and we didn't, it was kind of a quick hit. By placing the, the communication in specific programmes that had a real aspirational feel, you know, the E-Force, Channel Force, to our kind of youthful, kind of uh, urbanite audience, that we could retain the integrity of the attitude of the brand but take it to a broader audience at the same time and TV was great for us to do that. 38 handfuls of real lavender helped make one relaxing bottle of original source bath foam. There wasn't a great deal of action in the commercials, there wasn't a great deal to look at, but because of that it made you listen to the script. The proposition we were working to was very much be behind uh, showing people and, and, and talking to people about the amount of uh, ingredients, uh, real ingredients there were in every single one of the products. We could associate it with food programmes because of the sort of the nature of the programme in terms of food and produce and the, the sort of health nature of st stuff like that. Or we could kind of go down the, the sort of adventure, intense experiences and associate ourselves with outdoor sports and brands such as Ellis Brigham, which we did a sampling campaign with. So there was brand synergy between Ellis Brigham and Original Source in terms of this intense natural experience.
To back the kind of TV campaign, we had press activity, looking in listings, magazines and web activity to support that. So there were other media uh, played a really important role in the overall mix. At every point along the sort of communications ladder, we were reinforcing the product story. It was all about the fact that Mint had 7,297 mint leaves in every pack. So the consumer absolutely got this message about packed with natural stuff and the intense experience. It's massively important that the commercial's not just entertaining and gets noticed, but it needs to sell product and, you know, it was massively successful for Cousins. The goal for the campaign was to increase, um, in, in that particular year, sales by 15%. Um, and actually what we found in the period of the campaign, it increased 45% um, in, the, in the year ending uh, the campaign dates. Um, and that was a, a, against a market that only grew 7%. So it was extremely successful in driving sales. But we also did some analysis to look at the number of new users that were brought into the brand you know, over the period of the campaign. And that, that equated to over 800,000. The brand had always used uh, sampling and, the, and its website as a, was a key kind of uh, fulcrum for that strategy. You know, the idea about getting the product into people's hands. And that continued through this campaign. And what we saw was immediately the TV uh, hit hit people's boxes. Uh, the requests for samples increased dramatically from that day onwards, and actually were sustained over quite a long period of time afterwards. We've done a model that suggests that we we will have created a 1.6 million pounds worth of additional uh, profit for this particular brand on the back of this this campaign, which is a you know powerful delivery on the investment. It's a real indication that advertising works and shouldn't be a sort of afterthought when it comes to budget allocation for businesses, they can basically prove the return of investment for advertising spend. And for clients, that's ultimately more important than being able to go back with a creative award. It's been able to walk into their boardroom with their head held high with a bunch of papers in their hand that say, do you know what, I can do my job and I do it well.